You're listening to Leadership Podcast, a series of short, insightful discussions with experts in the field of volunteer leadership. Brought to you by the ARIA Center for Leadership Development, your interviewer is Elaine LaChapelle. Well, welcome to the ARIA Leadership Conference. We're doing a few podcasts today, interviews, and today I happen to be able to grab Marnie McBean for a short talk about uh, how to achieve success, and she certainly knows a lot about that. <laughs> Marnie is an Olympic rowing champion. She's a uh, keynote speaker. She's a mentor. Uh, she's an author of her book, The Power of More. So go she's on, a, go a on. busy woman, yes. And, uh, and we're just so glad to have her here. She just came off a very successful uh, presentation with our members, so uh, she's pumped. <laughs> yeah, it was a great morning. Wonderful, Thanks, well, welcome. Elaine. Yeah. So in your presentation, Marnie, I know you spend a fair bit of time talking about those things that helped you be successful as an Olympic rower and, and relate to other leaders. And, and one of the things you talk about is the difference between a dream and a goal. Can you share a bit about what you feel about that? For sure, a dream is something that's, it really sits alone, it's isolated and there's no connection really between who, who we are and, and the dreams that we have. Um, but goals, uh, we have a path the, and, and that's the difference. It can be exactly the same thing, but as, as soon as we decide how we want to achieve it, so let's say I had a dream of going to the Olympics. Mm -hmm. Well, until I pick a sport, it's just a dream. <laughs> and then right. I'm like, okay, well, I'll try rowing. And then I need to learn how to row. I need to make the national team. I need to be the best on the national team. I need to um, get qualified for the Olympics. So then all of a sudden that dream uh, became a goal because I had a path. And so that's, uh, it really is the difference. We, a lot of people have dreams mm -hmm. and that's great. Um, but it's, it's scary, but it's, it's kind of easy because at first all you need to do is just put one, one little pin holder, one little waypoint between you and the who you are today and the who you want to be tomorrow. As soon as you have like one, one waypoint in the middle there, you have a path. Mm -hmm. And as you start going along that path, you'll probably put in, you know, sometimes hundreds of more waypoints between you and the goal that you want to achieve. But uh, once you have a path, you've got a goal. Because you don't always know what it's going to take, I guess, right? You oh, gosh, no. It almost seem unrealistic at times. Yeah, well, when I first wanted to go to the Olympics, I thought it was as simple as that, like learn to row, um, you know, try out for the national team, make the national team, um, and then I'll go to the Olympics, right? So it's four points, four little pictures <laughs> between me now or me then and the Olympics. And in hindsight, I realized that those four pictures were probably 40,000 pictures. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's the thing about curiosity and learning, right? The, the first day I found um, sport, I think learning is like running down a, a corridor of doors. And I found rowing and I opened that door and, I, and it leads me to a corridor of doors and there's 10 doors. And I think, oh, once I've opened all those doors, I will know rowing. And there's one for the catch and the finish and balance and teamwork. And I go running around and I open up all those doors and I'm learning. Um, but every door I open in that corridor of doors leads to another corridor of doors and, and that's um, how learning becomes exponential and I really think that's how people who are career champions um, they get it because they never stop being curious and they never stop learning and they never stop opening these doors. Now opening all those doors and learning through experience is, uh, can be very exciting as I'm sure but you can also understand for many people it's, it's very stressful. They find themselves in situations where they may not even be sure they're going to be able to learn what they need to uh, to accomplish their goals. Um, but I understand you think stress is a, is a good thing. Uh, can you tell us more about that? I think stress is absolutely the spice of life yeah. and it's, it's what makes us interesting and, and we actually only have stress for things that we, we care about. And if we don't care about anything, we have no stress. Um, and most people, if, if you know somebody who doesn't care about anything and they have no stress in their life, they're probably also a pretty boring or pretty bitter mm -hmm. person because there's nothing, they, they don't care about anything. Okay. And so s stress becomes pretty interesting in the sense that, you know, if we go back to that whole idea of being curious and opening doors, it is stressful that, you know, you know you're going to open up another door and you know it's basically opening up this whole, like, <laughs> big hairy deal because it's not easy you're like okay I have to learn something new and what's behind this yeah. door um, but that's where we have to be careful about experience right because experience tells us there's always more to learn and right and learning something little can often lead learning to something big mm -hmm. but um, that's a mistake that adults make right is there like experience tells them that opening the door could be hard 
Um, and so they stop opening doors. They stop getting curious, right? And that's why watching kids is so joyful because they just run around opening all the doors. They know they don't have to go into all of them, but they're just curious, like what's behind this door? And they're learning all the time. And, and this gives them tools to react to a lot of different things. And it's how they start gathering their experience. And it's how experience starts teaching adults to stop learning. So we have to be careful we don't fall into that trap. And ourselves, especially, you know, and we as leaders and most of the people that are watching this are leaders in some way. It's easy to get to a position where you feel, okay, I've learned what I need to know. And, and oh, that's I, true. it's the, so I've been true. doing it this way for the last yeah. five years. Why would I change yeah. thing? And, you know, I, I spoke in the presentation today about how preparation was like trying to fill a cup with grains of rice. And every day that we learn, you get to put another grain of rice into the cup. And I think once you start saying the, I've been doing it this way for five years or 10 years, why would I change? You might as well dump all that preparation out because you're just, you're done and you stopped learning. And the truth is when you stop learning, the world is going to pass you by. Now, I know one of the stories you talk about in your presentation and in your book has to do with uh, Kathleen Heddle. And as one of the best or the best uh, rowers that Canada's ever produced, understand that at one point you were hesitant to row with her. Uh, why would that have been? Story. Yeah, well, without question, um, I, I think I heard you right there. But Kathleen is the most uh, talented rower that Canada has ever produced. Um, and I know that in hindsight, I would like just, I would sign it in stone anywhere um, now in hindsight. But at the time, I just saw her as a, a calm and quiet person. And I didn't really get how um, an extrovert like me could um, be in a successful partnership with an introvert. And at the time, I didn't even understand how an introvert could be competitive and aggressive. And so I spent a lot of time first trying to change her. And you know, I, I, I sort of told the many stories, <laughs> and it's, I, I write a lot in my book about um, all the mistakes I made thinking that I needed to change Kathleen Heddle, um, where uh, eventually I realized that even though she is calm and quiet, she is extremely competitive and she's extremely um, aggressive and she just does her work. You know, I'm like, oh, I'm going to race and I'm going to compete <laughs> and I'm going to beat you. And she just does her work and it's the best work in Canada. It's the wow. best work in the world. And once I start realizing that, I realize something um, really important is that, um, you know, that people aren't always going to, she was never going to communicate with me the way that I communicated with her. And th that was actually a good thing. And uh, I said to the audience that today, I'm like, you know, introverts, sometimes they want to shut up the extroverts because, you know, we don't have an internal yeah. dialogue kind of thing. <laughs> and I suggested that sometimes they just throw us a bone because often people um, like me, we're, we're very much seeking approval. It's not attention. A lot of people used to say, oh, you're an attention seeker. I'm an approval seeker. Um, and if Kathleen would throw me a bone, then I'd be like fine and calm and I could shut up for a long time. But at the same time, um, extroverts like myself have to realize that we're not always going to get the bone that we want um, and that's that's relationships and that's partnerships and it's not about meeting in the middle it's not about me getting 50% quieter and Kathleen getting 50% louder it's about me giving Kathleen a hundred percent of what I've got and the skills and the energies um, and me accepting a hundred percent of what she'll give me um, and if I've earned her respect and trust she'll give me a hundred percent of what she's got um, and I need to accept that. Like if I give apples, I'm going to give apples, but I need to be able to accept oranges from Kathleen. Wow. And um, once I started doing that, once I started letting her be aggressive and competitive in her way, and I stopped trying to make her aggressive and competitive in my way, uh, that's when we became a great team. We stopped just being good athletes who had made the national team. We became great athletes wow. who were world and Olympic champions. That's great advice for anyone and especially for people in a leadership role because they're going to be inevitably be part of a team. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And leaders tend more often than not to be extroverts. And there are some incredibly power introverts in, the, uh, are in their team. Wonderful. Well, I was delighted to talk to you today, Marnie. Oh, thanks, Elaine. I'm glad you could join us. I have been speaking with Marnie McBean, Olympic rowing champion and author, and I've just been delighted to have some time with her today. If you want to find out more about Marnie or what we've talked about, you're welcome to go to her website, marniemcbean.ca. All the best. You've been listening to Leadership Podcast. To subscribe to this podcast, go to aria.com slash leadership.